I also think the people that work airport security should look better when you think about all the health and beauty products they take away. <laughs> hey, before you throw my aftershave in the garbage, why don't you slap some on yourself, lady? I'm just, I'm still upset because I, I'm still upset I had a corkscrew taken away from me at an airport years ago. And by the way, I don't always travel with a corkscrew. I have a lot of problems, but that's not one of them. Uh, it was a wedding gift. Uh, I was out go flying out to Los Angeles for a wedding and I had a corkscrew. It was a wedding gift. It was in my carry-on. Didn't think it was an issue. Apparently it was. And the guy took it. And first of all, he, he looked at me like he caught me. As if a corkscrew would be my weapon of choice if I wanted to... <laughs> And then what really got me was he said, uh, what's this for? I said, I'm constipated. I knew he was gonna take it. I am from the Middle East, but ever since September 11th, I feel so Mexican. I flew in this morning from California, almost missed my connection flight because I can't run through the airport anymore. <laughs> if you look like me, don't run anywhere. <laughs> People will tackle you. In the name of freedom. <laughs> because airport security, they are tense. Ah, oh, one time I got arrested for a photo bomb. My job is to comfort you on the plane. That's my job. How many of you have flown since September 11? Wow. Aren't you glad I was not sitting right next to you on the plane? Because I don't care how politically correct you are, you get nervous when I'm sitting next to you. I had a priest. A priest shouldn't be scared of dying, right? He was shaking like, you're not Middle Eastern, are you? I go, yes, I am. <laughs> He goes, is your allegiance to this country? I said, yeah, I want to die here. <laughs> it's good to be here. I've been traveling a lot, doing a lot of flying, and uh, here's what I've learned flying through airports across America. Apparently, the smaller the town, the more I look Arab. So... <laughs> I just go to some airports in my underwear, because, hey, let's save time. I'm ready to go. And whenever given the choice between the x-ray or the pat-down, I will always choose the pat-down. Number one, I don't feel like being radiated every time I fly. And number two, <laughs> I can close my eyes and you are whoever I want you to be. <laughs> okay, Anne Hathaway, you make this country safer. <laughs> Just, you know, I'm helping America find it. They still take your nail clippers, but here's the funny part. Not only do they take your nail clippers, they're required to ask you why you brought them. <laughs> it's in the name. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I am all for safety, but here's the thing. If you try and take over the plane with nail clippers, I will beat the crap out of you. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was 12, but it's go time. I got this. You have nail clippers. I've got an in-flight magazine with your name on it. <laughs> and yes, that's how I fight. I didn't mean to scare you folks. <laughs> I've been kind of having an interesting week. I've been having an interesting week. I'll tell you how it started. On Monday, a TSA agent grabbed my booty. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, one person. <laughs> yeah, and I know that's like a lame thing to be making jokes about in 2018, because come on, give them a break. They're just doing their job. But, you know. At the same time, you know, I wasn't even at an airport. <laughs> yeah, just picking up my dry cleaning. <laughs> He comes over in his nice crisp blue shirt, gives me a little honk. I'm like, you're outside your jurisdiction. <laughs> Granted, I don't know the Patriot Act front to back. I'm gonna do some Googling when I get home though. Your manager's getting a sternly worded email. <laughs> it's 
good to be here to see you guys. I was I had a flight from Tampa to Los Angeles where I live a couple of days ago, and I was checking into that flight. You know, they make you put your bag on there and you weigh it. And that lady from the airline looked at me. She goes, "So your bag is over 50 pounds, and for safety reasons, we can't put bags in excess of 50 pounds onto the flight." So I start to grab the bag. She goes, "But <laughs> if you give us a hundred more dollars." We'll go ahead and throw it on the plane for it. <laughs> I was like, well, that's great, but how does that fix the safety issue <laughs> that you were just so concerned about? Let me get this straight. If I give you a hundred more dollars, you're gonna turn on the extra safety features of this aeroplane. Like, I didn't know that's how it worked. They shouldn't have gave me that kind of information. We were about to take off. Like, starting picture seat up, we're about to take off. I just threw 100 at her. I was like, nope. <laughs> and here's five more. Trey stays down <laughs> the whole time. I'm a Trey down kind of guy. Plane started taxiing out. I still had my phone out. She got so mad. She come running down the aisle. She goes, sir, you put your phone away. The signal from your phone can interfere with the plane signal. That could be very, I just threw my credit cards. Don't you talk to me anymore. <laughs> Everybody gets Wi-Fi. <laughs> Don't worry about the signals, everyone. I've paid extra for the safety package. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Well, people are, are always asking me where I get my material. And the truth is, I get my material living life. You know, whatever happens to me, good or bad, I find the humor in it. Four and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. I'd just gone for a routine checkup, and um, the nurse practitioner was examining me, and we were laughing and joking about getting older, when all of a sudden, she got to my abdomen, and all the blood drained out of her face, and she said, you have a huge mass. She said, didn't you feel that? I said, well, I knew it didn't matter what I did. I couldn't get rid of my stomach, but I thought it was just like the middle-aged spread, you know? She, <laughs> she said, that's not fat, that is a mass. I said, well, you better check back here because I can't get rid of that either. <laughs> the next week I was in surgery and when the, my doctor cut me open, my right ovary came flying out the size of a cantaloupe, my left ovary size of a grapefruit. Turns out my muffin top is a fruit salad. <laughs> and I travel all the time, which means I go through those x-ray machines at airport security a lot. Don't you think that at some point, a TSA agent would have pulled me aside? <laughs> I don't see a bomb, but you're packing a fruit stand, lady. <laughs> Call your doctor. I'm, uh, I'm Canadian. I, uh, I flew from, uh, from Canada uh, yesterday. I, I flew, uh, flew down. Um, and uh, I was going to say flew up, but that doesn't make sense. Uh, here's what happened. I'm going through security. All I forgot to do, airport security, all I forgot to do is stick my chapstick in a little Ziploc bag where you, where you put your gels in your liquids. Just forgot to stick it in there, and security guard decided to make issue with it, right? He said, well, it's actually a gel you're supposed to put in the bag. You didn't put it in the bag. I was like, oh, I must have just forgotten. I'll, I'll take it now. And he's like, no, no, no. I need to confiscate it now because you didn't put it in the bag. I was like, dude, it's chapstick, you know? <laughs> what are you going to do with chapstick? You know, take me somewhere! Granted, it did say lip balm on it. Lip balm. It's a lip balm joke. That's, uh... What in the world? But it is, it's so great. I love doing comedy. I've been doing this uh, for many years. Uh, a lot of people want to know what the worst uh, part is. And, it, and honestly, this is the best part. It's flying. It's, uh, and the worst part is my last name really is Smiley, which is a great last name for a comedian. It's the worst last name if you have to fly all the time. Because every, every TSA guy, it even happened this morning, they look at my ID and go, oh, Smiley, how come you're not smiling? You got a last name Smiley, you ought to smile all the time. We're going to call you Mr. Frowny, Mr. Smiley. Let's see that smile. And all I can think of is, man. <laughs> I'm so close to your gun. 
I always have trouble at the airport. Went through TSA once, they stopped me, pulled my bag over and said, mm, we need to go through it. Why? Looks like it's uh, disorganized. <laughs> it's a suitcase, sir. He reached in there, pulled out my peanut butter, set it down, goes, can't take this on the plane. What, what am I gonna smear it on the door hoping somebody's got a peanut allergy? I'm taking this thing down! <laughs> He said, no, it's a liquid. <laughs> my cynical mind started thinking. I should have shut myself up. Because I said, oh, is it? Grab a straw and take a drink. Let's see how that works out for you. <laughs> then he went and got rubber gloves. I'm like, okay, you can have the peanut butter. I'm out of here. I'll give you a couple tips if you think you might want to take pictures when you people watch. Number one, make sure that the flash and the sound on your phone are turned off. <laughs> I know, sounds like a no-brainer, right? Guys, I've been doing this a long time. I messed up. <laughs> I'm in line for security at the airport. I'm going this way, coming at me, gentleman. Hawaiian shirt, shaved face, but out of the top of his shirt was this. <laughs> Perm? I don't know if that's the right. A tuft? It was the brightest, whitest, bushiest chest hair I have ever seen in my life. I've seen white chest hair, okay? This was next level. It was teased, possibly bleached. He looked like a Build-A-Bear whose neck had been slit to send a message to the other Build-A-Bears to get it together because the numbers are low, right? And I knew if I didn't get a picture of him, I wasn't gonna be able to sleep that night. Now, here's the rub. I can't take a picture from this distance at this angle. No one's gonna appreciate how awesome this thing is. If I really want the likes, I gotta time it so that when he's passing by me, I can get that profile shot. Right, really give it some depth. Now to do this, it's a timing thing, so I have this face I make, which is basically, what? I'm just checking Twitter, even though my phone's kind of pointed in your general direction. <laughs> he stops right here, I hit the button, it's like, kick flash, I was like. <laughs> There's a Pokemon on your shoulder, sir. Could you please? I'm gonna get it. Please hold still. Oh, he jumped into your obnoxious chest hair. That stinks. Maybe next time. We'll get him next time. We'll get him at the layover. I love this job. This is my favorite thing to do in all of the things that I do in, as an actor and a comedian. I love the live feedback. I love to be able to come out to a different city and, and, and you get to learn a little bit about me and you know, sometimes I learn a little bit about you. And uh, the thing I don't like about this job, I don't, I don't like having to go to the airport and deal with the TSA to get to it. <laughs> See, there's no unified protocol for TSA in this country. Have you noticed that? Yes. Every airport is different. You know, if I knew I had to do X, Y, and Z, I'd do X, Y, and Z and everything would be smooth, am I right? You know, I ring every time I go through the metal detector. So now I just wear a hospital gown and foot socks. <laughs> I avoid the x-ray machine at all costs. They say the amount of radiation you get from the x-ray is the same as when you go to the dentist. Every time I've been to the dentist for an x-ray, they've draped me in a lead cape run a four flat 40 out of the room. <laughs> Got behind a little pane of bulletproof glass. <laughs> Push a button, eh, run in, move the thing, and run out again. I figure as much as I fly, two years I'll have a whole nother head growing out the side of my neck. <laughs> I'll be a comedy team at that point. <laughs> I take the pat down every time. Most people don't like the pat down because it, it's very invasive and touching everything. And can't stand it. If you're getting a pat down, you don't like it, 
do what I do. As soon as they start patting, just go. <laughs> <laughs> that was so nice. <laughs> They'll be all, next! <laughs> oh, the airport's horrible these days, man. It's slow. It takes forever to go to the airport, right? You're old school. Remember the good old days? When we could run through the airport? Remember when you're running late for a flight? Someone just said, you know what, I'm gonna drop you off. They drop you off at the curb and then you go running through that airport. Not anymore, baby. Not happening now. Remember the good old O.J. Simpson commercial with Avis? He would just, no, try that now. Stun gun, you're out. <laughs> Man, going to the airport now is horrible. Standing in line, it takes forever. You gotta, you gotta practically get undressed. You have to take off your belt. You have to hide your Koran. It's... <laughs> It's not bad, you guys are catching on, I think. You're starting, to, you're starting to believe. And you have to take off your shoes, which is horrible, because I got the worst dogs ever, man. When I was a young gentleman, right? When you're young, you take for granted how your feet look, right? You remember the good old days when it was not even an issue? Smooth, just pearly, beautiful toenails. You start getting old, they start, they start, I don't know what, they look like a bag of Cheetos is what it looks like. <laughs> Seriously, I take off my shoes. Looks like I only got four toes. I've got Cinco, but looks like I only have Quattro. You want to know why? Because my pinky toe don't want to participate. I got a pinky with some attitude. That pinky's under there. I got to pull that pinky out. No, I don't want to precipitate. No. I want to go to the library. Come on out now. And my second toe is like that much longer than the first toe. Anybody got one of those? It looks like a crinkle cut french fry is what it looks like. Me gusta las papas fritas. Romeo lives inside, not this, this bag. Oh, this is so humiliating. Okay, I need a realtor, okay. <laughs> oh man, come on, get in the bag. You are so mean. Believe it or not, your hand is sweaty. I don't care. <laughs> Tell that girl to come in here. Shush. This is so uncomfortable. I, I kind of squeeze Romeo into this bag. You're so mean because we travel all over the world. This is inane, I'm sorry. Um, believe it or not, this bag fits in the overhead bin with Romeo inside, which is a lot of fun when you come back into the United States and go through customs. <laughs> so if you can imagine coming into JFK Airport, in New York City internationally, and you're going through the TSA, in my world, Transportation Security Administration, in my world, TSA is Taylor searched aggressively, okay? <laughs> the bag goes into the x-ray machine and stops in the machine for a long time. I mean, they're looking at it, right? The head guy comes out, they've seen everything, he's already mad, excuse me, you know, whose bag is this? And I say, you know, it's my bag, sir. I need to look inside the bag. I'm gregarious. The bag is, oh, sir, before I open the bag, I need to ask you, is there anything in here I should know about? Hmm. <laughs> I can't think of anything. <laughs> Why don't you open the bag and see what happens? <laughs> so when he opens the bag, I do this. Hey, how you doing? But it's New York, so the guy says, you know, I'm not doing bad, little man. How are you doing in there? <laughs> they can't be comfortable. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, my goodness. I did. I took a flight in yesterday. I got in late last night. I flew in from Williston, North Dakota. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Smallest airport I've ever been to. You can back me up on that. The smallest I've ever... I mean, this thing was so small, TSA was self-checkout. I put my bag up and I ran it through and I sent it back. <laughs> well, I want to do a good job. <laughs> I got employee of the month. Um, 
precious people, just sweet people. But I'm telling you, a very relaxed atmosphere. Do you know what I mean? I, I flew in and we got off the plane, little tiny plane. I get off, I, I walk down the little cat blocks that they slid up there for me to get off on. Just let us off right in the yard. Uh, <laughs> the pilot got off behind me to take a smoke break. Uh, so I go inside and, and, and I have to do the show and then I came and I fly back out and this is when I find out really how small it is. Because on this flight I'm leaving, it's an even smaller plane, a little 10 seater. And y'all, I had, yes, honey, I know. <laughs> That's what I said. And I'm not fearful, but it did increase my prayer life. Um, <laughs> Y'all, I got on there and had the sweetest little baby flight attendant. She was precious. Probably on a little work permit. <laughs> well, I don't know how old she was, but I know she wasn't alive during the Reagan years. Um, and I'm gonna need them to be older, cause I'm older, right? I mean, I don't have anything against little Becky, okay? But listen, I don't want my flight attendant to have a cute little ponytail. I'm gonna need her to have some crow's feet. <laughs> like, if there's anything that's happened on this plane, if we find anything on this plane, I need to know that Gertrude and Bruce Willis know which wire to cut. <laughs> But that's not what I have on this flight. And I'm used to Atlanta, y'all. I fly out of Atlanta every week. You know, those flight attendants there, they have on uh, hose and heels and dress blues. They make you feel safe like the Marines. <laughs> but that's not what Becky had on. I'm telling you, this relaxed airport had me concerned. Little Becky had on a red T-shirt and a pair of khakis. <laughs> Like Becky, works part-time at Target. <laughs> Just thought she'd whip in and pick up a shift. <laughs> now Becky's going up and down the little aisle here and, and I can't tell what she's saying, but I noticed that people are starting to get a little annoyed with her until she gets to my seat and now I know why. Becky asks me, ma'am, I need you to verify your seat number, your name, and your weight. I said, girl, you trying to get people killed. She said, of course not. Why would you say that? Why would you say that to me? I said, well, baby, you just asked nine women ahead of me and they lied and I'm about to. Do the math, Becky. <laughs> I, I, I drive to a lot of places because, uh, well, I got in trouble because uh, once I was flying out to a show in L.A. and uh, I had on a T-shirt that said, touch me, I'll explode. In the airport, people didn't like that very much. So. I'm in the airport all the time. I'm a professional traveler. Here's my pro traveler tip for you guys. Next time you fly, this will make your trip through the airport more fun. They make you take your shoes off going through security, put them up on that conveyor belt. Right after you take your shoes off next time, go ahead, take your pants off. <laughs> put them up on the conveyor belt. Nobody's looking right at you. Everybody's focused on their own stuff. They only see you out of the corner of their eyes. So don't make a big deal about taking the pants off. Make it smooth and natural. Right after the second shoe, slip off your pants, fold them up nice, put them on top of the shoes. It's gonna take practice. But if you do this right, people behind you in line will start to take their pants off. I did not see this on the news. This is interesting, why? Why wouldn't they report that? I, I would've worn different underwear, I think. I didn't know this was coming. These are my comfortable, I'm gonna be flying all day underwear. Not my strangers might see them underwear. No, you guys know, uh, we all have to do this when we catch, a, catch the airplane, you know, catch, get on a flight. Uh, have to go through that full body scan. It's so invasive. Um, uh, but I'm a giver. Uh, last time I was in there, I, I threw in a couple pelvic thrusts because uh, I thought, uh, <laughs> Oh, I think they want to show. 
You want, you want some more of that? They, they did not. Uh, they, uh, you uh, throw the pelvic, oh, they'll jerk you right out of there. They uh, slip on a glove. This went on way too long, by the way. I, uh, I almost missed my flight. I finally said to this, uh, this, uh, this security guy, I said, if you don't stop with your bad touches, I'm going to grab my carry-on and, and squirt you in the eyes with no more than three ounces of contact lens solution. I, they like that. So I do a lot of filmmaking now. I do a lot of uh, work in movies. and I, So I'll be in L.A., Hollywood once in a while, flying to LAX. LAX, beautiful airport, isn't it? Always feel so safe there, don't you? Some guy from Al-Qaeda checking your ID. All right. I'll tell you, those x-ray people, they don't care who gets through there. I'll tell you who we need to get Gardner Airport, those Sam's and Costco people. Because good luck getting in or out of there without proper ID. Just take those six cases of macaroni and cheese right back, fella. And on the East Coast, they're bringing back the age-old question, has anyone unbeknownst to you given you any gifts or packages? People beknownst to me don't give me gifts or packages. And who in their right mind is gonna accept a gift or a package from someone in an airport of all places who's unbeknownst to them? I've never been at gate 24A and some guy's like, psst, psst. Mr. Burley, this gift, this gift is for you. Oh, well, thank you, that's very nice of you. No, 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 don't open it now. I'll open it in the sky for everyone to see. You know, that is very nice of you. You know, I didn't get your name. Of course you didn't. That's because I'm unbeknownst to you. <laughs> TSA has a new slogan. If you see something, say something, right? So if you see something out of the ordinary, you're supposed to report it. So I went up to the girl at the ticket counter and I said, I think my flight's leaving on time. <laughs> flew out here. I had to go through uh, airport security. Have you done this recently? Right? Uh, th yeah, they do, they do that full body scan, right? But, but I figured out a, way to get, out a way to get out of the full body scan. Here's what you do if you want to get out of the full body scan. Creepily ask for the full body scan. <laughs> Just walk up to the TSA guy. Yeah, I'd like the uh, full body scan, please. What do I owe you? Uh, they're like, no, he's good, he's good. He's not a terrorist. Get out of here, weirdo. I like to do this when they're patting me down. I like to go, you'll never find it. <laughs> that tickles. Yeah. <laughs> 